how did I reach this point? The question repeated endlessly in my head, demanding answers I couldn't give. I sat shivering on the edge of our bed even though V had changed me into the heaviest shirt and sweatpants she could find. She was kneeling in front of me, tending to the cut on my wrist. The bleeding had nearly stopped not long after she'd lifted me out of the tub. All I'd managed to do was make a mess of the floor. She kept saying the laceration was shallow, that it wouldn't require stitches, that the thick drops of tissue adhesive she applied would keep it closed, but it hadn't taken long to realize she was talking more to herself than she was to me. And still, it did nothing to allay the sadness in her eyes, or the shock in my own. I'd nearly done it. Or maybe I hadn't. I couldn't tell anymore. I only knew one thing. I needed help. Okay, V breathed, eyes focusing intently on the fresh scar I'd managed to carve. You didn't go too deep, so I think that'll hold. I'm still gonna wrap this up real tight. You sure you're not feeling any numbness in your wrist? It stings, I muttered. I know. V gently rubbed her palm along my cheek. It was shocking how warm it was. It means that this shit is working and sealing up the cut. If it wasn't, you might still be bleeding. V couldn't cover her mouth in time to choke back the sob that escaped her lips. Christ, her eyes were so bloodshot, just as my own surely were. So much had come out. So much remained. I'd still be bleeding? Was that true? Had I really come that close? It hadn't seemed like it. I thought I hadn't gotten that far. How did I get to this point? V clenched her jaw and drew a deep, shaky breath before turning her attention back to the first aid kit. She was careful with the gauze, holding my arm in her hand as though it were made of delicate porcelain and the cut was a crack upon its polished surface, one which might shatter at any moment. Was that going to be the nightmare she would awaken to later tonight? That suddenly my wrist would split open, spraying blood all over her as I bled out? God damn it, V cursed. I should have known something was off. How the fuck could I let this happen? I tried to speak, but all that came out was a high-pitched whistle where my voice should have been. What, Judy? I cleared my throat, wincing as I swallowed away the lump that had lodged there. <clears throat> Wasn't you. Don't blame yourself. V didn't say anything further, even though her lip was starting to quiver. She focused on her movements, wrapping the fabric tightly around my wrist. When she was satisfied with her work, she cut the wrap and folded the end under itself. I'm sorry, V. It should have been impossible for there to be any more tears left in me, yet there they were, spilling down my face as V pulled me tightly into her arms. I felt hot drops splattering onto my shoulder and realized I wasn't alone. Don't say sorry, baby, V whispered, sniffling. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I wasn't there when you needed me. You fucking needed, needed help, and I, I didn't, I didn't see it. No, it's, it's not you, I said, my voice breaking. You didn't know because I didn't want you knowing. I'm too good of a fucking liar. I let her hold me, rubbing her hands across my back, trying to soothe me as best she could. More than anything, I wanted to do the same for her. But I couldn't. I needed this. More than ever before more than I could have ever admitted. I needed to feel safe. I'd tried so hard to be strong for her, for myself, but I just couldn't do it anymore. Couldn't live like this anymore. The floodgates that had been locked up inside of me for so long had suddenly burst open, and unlike my wrist which V had managed to seal shut, there was nothing I could do to close them again. They all know now. V pulled away, keeping her hands on my shoulders. Her eyes were desperate for answers. What do you mean, they all know? 
What happened? Please tell me, Judy. Please don't keep me out anymore. I felt the words dancing on the tip of my tongue, just as they had done so many times before. But this time, they came out of me with such ease that it was shocking to hear myself speak them. The filter I had relied upon for years had seemingly washed away with the rest of the lies. Fee, th they fucking scrolled it. What they did to me, you understand? They, sc they scrolled every fucking second. And it's out there now, on the streets. Anyone who wants to go at me, all they gotta do is drop some eddies for my own XBD. And they can fuck me any way they want. Find out all about Lizzie's secret. That's what they called me. Only now, there's no secret at all. Shit, V. They did it to get back at us for getting Evelyn out of there. They threw your name out at the end. S -s Said some terrible shit. Said they would see us both again soon. Fuck, even right now, there's creeps all over the city probably jerking off to it. Stop, please. What? Stop. Why? She had just told me to let her in. Why was she... Oh my god. V. I hadn't considered how much it would hurt her to know she would not only be sharing me with everyone who stumbled across the XBD, but that they had taunted her at the end, making the whole thing out to be her fault. Why the fuck hadn't I thought about her feelings? The agony in her eyes had been building as I went on until finally I'd succeeded in breaking her. She'd never listen to me again. My cheeks burned with shame as V placed her hands on them and brought her face close to my own. I should have been stronger for her. Thank you, Judy. I blinked. Wh what? Even though tears continued to stream from her eyes, the corners of her lips turned upward, forming into... Was that a smile? It couldn't be. Not possible. Thank you for finally opening up to me. I, I know it's hard, baby. Believe me, I fucking know. But I'm so proud of you. Do you hear me? I am so proud. I shook my head. This wasn't right. She was just scared, saying what she thought I needed to hear until she could call that hotline and ship me off to some asylum where I belonged. She knew how hard it was? Please, how could she understand? It wasn't possible. Was it? What did it say that, after years of living together and sharing our lives, there were still secrets locked deep inside of her? Secrets which she might have shared with me if I had simply asked. Was that why she had tried to bury away her fears with pills? V, listen to me. I am not gonna break, Judy. I'm stronger than you think I am. I know there's more you need to tell me, and I know it's gonna hurt to hear it all, but I will not fucking break. I promise you that. You don't know that, V. You're right. There's a shit ton more I gotta tell you. So much more. And I, I don't wanna hurt you. And fuck, I already hurt you. I'm so- Stop, Judy. Please stop. V traced a hand through my still damp hair. Don't you ever apologize for being open with me. I know it doesn't seem like it right now, but tr Believe me. You made a big fucking step forward tonight. Forward? I'd just come within an inch of killing myself like Evelyn, and she thought this was a fucking step forward? As if all I had to do was simply build upon it and take another step? Right foot. Left foot. I... I don't know where to start, V. V nodded, her face brimming with confidence as she wiped away a tear. We're gonna start at the beginning, where we both should have started right from the get-go. But we're not gonna do this tonight. We're both too raw right now. And you could do with some sleep. I couldn't argue with her. My eyes already felt heavy from the incredible strain the day had brought. But as tired as I was, a part of me still fought to stay awake, knowing my nightmares were eager to visit me as soon as I drifted off. I couldn't run away from them anymore. 
and it seemed that even death was a hiding place I could no longer retreat to. Facing them was the only option I had left, whether I wanted to or not. Facing them. They had said they would see us again. Can see those wheels of yours turning, V observed. Is it all right if you let me monitor your bioscan? Just for tonight, so I can make sure this shit holds. I nodded, the gentle swaying of my head further fueling my fatigue. V drew the personal link from her wrist and moved slowly so I could see what she was doing, almost as though I were a wounded animal. She carefully inserted it into the port above my ear. My HUD quickly acknowledged V's presence and prompted me to provide her with access to my vitals, which I granted. There wasn't much data for V to monitor. My pulse, blood pressure, temperature, respiratory rate, but if it helped put her mind at ease. Good. I'm gonna grab you a glass of water. Why don't you go ahead and get under the covers, okay? It took enormous effort to move, my limbs suddenly feeling like jelly. I was still struggling to pull the blanket over me thanks to my bandaged wrist when V returned with a glass in hand. Here, I got you. V set the glass down next to the bed and helped me get covered up. I was exhausted, already verging on the edge of sleep. But... Are you gonna lay next to me? V's lips parted, her eyes uncertain. I... I wasn't sure if I should. If you wanted me to, I mean. The last thing I want to do is make you feel uncomfortable. This was the legacy of all my lies. She was walking on pins and needles around me, uncertain if she should comfort me or if she would only hurt me even more. This truly was my fault. But I needed her. She was safe even when everything else had turned out to be anything but. I nodded, trying to hold my arms out to her, but failing. V quickly tugged her jeans off and climbed into bed next to me, sliding under the covers and wrapping an arm over me. My teeth were still chattering, but I quickly felt myself growing warmer, starting to slip away. Shh, just go to sleep, I heard V whisper in my ear. I'll stay with you. My body was hypnotized under her words, eyes closing shut as V nestled closer. So warm. V? My voice was so distant. Was I already asleep? Yeah. I gotta tell you something else. You don't gotta say another word tonight, Judy. Just close your eyes. You don't need to be afraid of anything. If I see you starting to have a bad dream, I'll wake you up. I'm going to watch you all night long just to make sure. Would she? I'd done the same for her once before and had felt resentment afterward. Was that what she would feel tomorrow? Christ, I wanted to believe her so fucking badly, but could I really trust her to stay awake and watch me? What would happen if she fell asleep and I woke up not knowing where I was again, screaming and thrashing as their laughter echoed endlessly in my ears? But V was so safe. I'm glad you stopped me. Had I said that out loud? Or had it only been inside my head? I slipped over the edge of consciousness though I thought I heard what sounded like V's voice as I plunged into darkness. Something about being glad? Love? I couldn't tell. I'd held on as long as I could. V was with me. I didn't know what tomorrow would bring, but a voice in the back of my head told me she would keep to her word and ward off any bad dreams that might dare to visit me. I was safe. 